Hello, everybody, and welcome to Akuba Nights. Buderius, how are you doing today? Well, uh, Buderius, I don't know how Buderius is doing, but uh, Sven or Almighty is doing great. Um, it was a good week. Uh, I'm a bit stressed out about all my my stuff that's going on um, for my exam, but other than that, I'm I'm happy. I'm good. I'm relaxed, and I'm hoping we're going to have uh, four or three nice hours of uh, yeah gameplay. I hope so too. Uh, as you viewers can tell, there is nobody else around us. Maya, Sammy, and Sarah are all gone. That's because we're doing a Buderios flashback. We're going to take a look at where Buderios was 12 years ago when he fucked off from his homeland, went down to Drekus, got himself into endless amounts of trouble, and then eventually became the man he is uh, when we started the campaign. We're not going to get through all of that today. We'll get through it a segment of it and when we have weeks where people can't make episodes we'll probably do these flashbacks you know if only one person or two people can make it we'll we'll just do like Buderius part two in the past and Buderius part three in the past or sammy or sarah or whatever so uh with that preamble taken care of where do we want to start hmm perhaps I think... we should start with why you left yes um, a couple of years before I arrived in Drakis, there was an attempt on Buderio's life. And there was an assassin who struck him down. And he didn't know who it was, uh, who was the, um, who, who was behind the assassination attempt. But his sister, Sarah, saved him and, um, helped him, um, stay alive and and that night he decided that he can't stay he needs to go he is just um, a danger for his family and um, he was he was also fearing for his life he wasn't um, a fearless man back then he was more he was a coward he wanted to run he wanted to survive he he know he, he he might come back at some time but uh, right now it isn't safe, so he hoped that at some point he might get a message that, oh, the assassin is dead, everything is great, come back. But uh, life had, uh, or Tempos had a different idea about his uh, way of life, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so how did you get to Outlast, this port town just to the south of your, well, southwest, southeast of your home? Ah, that's a very good idea. Udarius doesn't really remember. It was a long <laughs> night, and uh, there was a lot of gambling involved, a lot of drinking. And at the start of it all, he had quite a bit of money left still, and he wanted to make more money to have a more comfortable life. But uh, they ended up taking everything from him. And the next thing he remembers, well, is uh, waking up at a port in an unknown country with uh, people speaking a tongue he's not able to speak himself. And as soon as he realizes where he has ended up with a bit of fear in his eyes, because this is enemy country. Those enemy territory. dirty Drakissian dogs. Mm. There's been a, a long-standing rivalry between Akuba and Drekus. If you haven't picked up on it yet, viewers, it is a not a friendly association. So and the only thing he has to his name right now is um, his pants and his sash, and that's it. There's nothing else left. No money, no weapons, no belt of strength or anything. That's it. So... So, I think you wake up underneath a pier um, near the, the main section of town. It's got a wall that goes around it, even over the, the port area, but like, there's like a, how do you want to call it? A, in the very center of town, there's like a, an open area where there's beach and everything on the center of the port. And there's a, a nice long wooden pier that runs far out into the sea. And I think you wake up underneath it, sand in your mouth, wet pants. Wow. What 
Why? Ooh, my head. <clears throat> well, he will slowly take. Um, he, he he will look around if anyone is close by, and he first he's going to take a a leak of piss somewhere fast, and then he's going to stretch. Oh God! Every oh. What? And he takes a look around. Uh, is there anything different? I mean, he doesn't uh, he doesn't know the town at all first, so. Well, mm. everything is different then. Yeah. Uh, everything except for the color of the sand is different. There are uh, a couple people to your right. They're fishing, just casting out off the beach instead of off the pier, which indicates that they are of extreme poverty because they're they can't even fish off the pier. You have to pay like a, a small fee to do that. And they are doing their best not to make contact with you. They're staring straight ahead at the water and they are dressed in odd clothes. Um, they've got this like, these, um, what do you want to call it? Like canvas pants with little uh, metal buttons put, it, put in them. It's some sort of bizarre styling because the buttons are clearly decorative and not useful at all. Um, they're not wearing any shirts. They they have a similar skin tone and composition to Budair. Well, maybe not Budair. I think Budaris has been an inside. Um, hasn't been quite such an outside boy yet, right? He has, probably... more, he has more of a pale skin. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they're well tanned. It looks like maybe a father and a son and daughter or something like that. Um, further down the beach, you can see a couple of boats pulled up, which you instantly recognize as Drakissian style ships and not Akuban style ships. On the other side of you, there are a couple of kids. Well, maybe not kids, uh, you know, 18 to 21 year olds, maybe three or four of them. And they're huddled in a semicircle talking with themselves. And you notice they're pointing at you and sort of like sniggering to each other. Dracusian ships in an Akuban harbor is his first fall. What? <laughs> uh, I mean, poor people can't can't uh, choose what kind of clothes they wear, so he's a bit lenient on it, so he doesn't really notice it, but he s s slowly walks over uh, in the direction of the boys. Uh, the I mean, first... he's 20 years old himself, so... Oh, these people are just your age then, yeah. So mm -hmm. as they approach, one of them says something kind of weird. You know, he just jabbers at you. It's a, like a two syllables and you don't understand what he's saying. And uh, when you don't reply right away, kind of gets a, a grin on his face and just kicks a little bit of sand in your direction. Not enough to hit you, but, you know. It can sand your way. I slowly uh, raise my arms. Um, do I recognize this as a Drakissian tongue? Or is it completely just foreign to me? Uh, it's probably foreign to you. I don't think you have any idea what the, he's saying. So they're... That's, that's, they're Drakissian ships. They're speaking a tongue I don't understand. I think I might be in trouble. Uh, 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 he opens the mouth and wants to say something in a Cuban and as fast he, he keeps quiet and says in Eridonian he says hello uh, the kid says another two or three syllable thing at you that you don't pick up on and uh, this time kick sand hard enough to splash it on your legs okay uh, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, uh, I, I don't speak your language. He takes a step and slowly, forward and uh, tries to kick you. Back. Oh, I take a step back. Yes. He I'm smiles on. and, uh, kicks more sand at you. This time it comes up towards your chest. Uh, hey, that's, I, I've done nothing to, I'm, I'm sorry if that's your territory. Um, Slowly backing two steps away, um, 
I don't want any trouble. His, Just want to know uh, where I am. His buddies show up and start to move forward on either side of you. Not like past you, but you know, as if they're forming a wall across the beach, moving your direction. Uh, am I getting mugged in a second? I just arrived here. I have nothing on me. I'm, I'm poor. I'm piss poor. I only have my pants. They're gonna. They're not gonna take my pants, are they? So, um, are there guards anywhere or any anyone who looks? The only other person is that dad with his son and daughter nearby. Uh, I don't think they will help me. Um, I'm gonna step a couple more steps back, and uh, if I f see a, a way out of the area i'm gonna i just think I'm, I'm gonna book it I'm well run the the two kids on the furthest ends try and like jog forward and circle around you okay uh, well um <clears throat> i'm trying to um outmaneuver them to run away all right I, I want you to give me an opposed dex check to avoid being <laughs> surrounded by these whippersnappers these hooligans uh, they get a 22. Okay. Ooh, you, you, 27. Can, you can break through their ranks before they manage to close around you and bolt down the beach. They will chase after you at full speed as well. Uh, so I'm going to need an opposed strength check to see if you can outrun these people. Because uh, you're a little hungover. I think maybe in normal circumstances... I don't know. They're in pretty good shape. I think it's a... We'll see. And they also know the territory. I have no idea where I'm really going. I just uh, trying to get, get somewhere. So yeah, twenty-eight. Well, that's very good. Yep, you manage to overpower them and outrun them. You get a good lead on them with your first sprint, and by the time you look back, they've stopped chasing. They're they didn't even pass the that dad and his kids. <sighs> I. Uh... If there's a building or something, I'm just gonna lean at it and take a take a moment to uh, uh, get my breath back. Mm -hmm. And oh, where what? Damn. Um, um. Are there more people around here? Oh yeah. There's a, a looks like there's a restaurant right next to this building that you're leaning on. And uh, there's like a small little nice picket fence that goes around the restaurant on the beach and a bunch of people sitting at tables sort of leaning over, oh. casually looking at you like, oh, here's a sight. Finally, some civilized people I can talk to. And I, uh, um, yeah, Whew. happy to see uh, some normal people. I'm uh, going to approach them. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, does anyone speak uh, Eridonian here? One of the gentlemen sitting down leans over and goes, Uh, yes, I do. Are you okay? Oh, thank God. I uh, thank, thank the gods. I, oh, I was nearly mugged in this city. Uh, excuse me, I, I, and? I just arrived. Uh, and, well, I lost all my belongings. I barely escaped these fools. Well, the guards were kind of. That's because you are weak. And if you are weak, what is yours is taken from you. Don't you know that? Excuse me. Uh, I think uh, maybe I have taken the wrong ship, but. Um, in, what he turns and starts jabbering at someone, and uh, you can tell at this point that it's definitely Drakissian. Do you speak Drakissian at this point in your life? No, not at all. Yeah. Not a syllable. Maybe I can say uh, asshole or um, some other um, bad word, but that's all. Nothing, right. nothing else. Right. Well, this person is actually speaking, you know, the, the real language. He's not just slumming it with his street lingo, so you can pick up on what he's saying. And maybe put two and two together and realize that the kids were just speaking some like guttural form of low Drekissian. Uh, yeah, Drekissian. Oh, God. Oh. Right. I always wanted to visit a city. 
Sorry, good sir. Can you, can you tell me the name of the city? He leans back over and goes, You don't know where you are. No. He chats with the two ladies seated across from him in Drakissian for a moment, and then says, Come over the fence. Sit with us. Thank you. Climb over the fence and sit down to them. Yeah, he orders some extra food and it arrives along with a, a very nice, refreshing cocktail. It's like a mojito or something. And uh, he pushes them in front of you and goes, you look tired and hungry. Please eat. Oh, I uh, thank you. Uh, and I, yeah, I start to drink and eat. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your hospitality. I, I ran away from home. Runaway. Hmm. Yes. Very common. I wanted to make some money on the ships, but it seems like I ended up in the in another city. I didn't. I didn't really want to visit. Uh, nothing against it. Um, I heard that Rakissians are nice people. If you get to know them. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where are you from? And, um, I think there's this visible pause for a second because he didn't think about it at that moment, but he says, uh, I'm, I'm from High Castle. Hmm. You are very far from home. How did you get here without knowing? Well... I was traveling from one ship to another, trying to get uh, the best raise, the best money. And uh, I hired on some ship. We had a little, a little, a little bit to drink and we played a little bit of cards. And it seems like uh, I must have angered them while being drunk. My temper sometimes gets the best of me. Hmm. Hmm. He nods a few times and kind of goes quiet, chats in Drekissian with the, the women in front of him for a little while longer. Uh, and when you've cleared your plate, he looks at you and goes, Good. Uh, five silver. And he puts out his hand. Yes, Five. yes, Five? You, you should be. Silver. Yes, you, you, should, you should be paid. You should be well paid for your generosity and hospitality. I understand that. And as soon as I have a job, I will gladly oh, repay no, your no, 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 no. You pay now or you work off your debt. Uh, but I, I don't have any money. Uh, I will give you job. Okay. Uh, well, uh. Well, what kind of job are we talking about? Come with me, he says, and he wipes his mouth and puts the handkerchief on the table, says a, a few words, and gives the, each of the women a kiss on the cheek, and then uh, puts an arm heavily around you, kind of tightly, and you, for the first time, maybe are realizing this guy's very strong. Like, his clothes are sort of loose-fitting and didn't really show off his physique, and he's not, like, bulging muscles, but he has dense muscles, like he works out a lot and uh, kind of holds you tight to him and walks you through the street and says, welcome to Outlast. This is uh, the greatest city in Drekus, possibly in the world. Here, we are strong people. We take what is ours. We fight for what we want. You owe me money. And the only way you're going to get it is fighting it for it. But seeing as those street rats have uh, already been able to best you, it's going to be a tough road. No one pays for weaklings to fight. So you get to be the sparring partner for our champion. 
excuse me. Sir, good sir. You will You're make not one silver a day. I'm not a fighter. And in five days, you will have paid off your debt. I may barely survive these five days, good sir. You will not survive not paying your debt. Very well. Good, good. Come with me, he says, and keeps a, a good tight hold on you as he walks you through the city uh, center here. It is a bustling little town. It's a lot going on here. There's all sorts of people speaking in Drakissian, and you don't understand a word of it. You get all sorts of sideways looks from the people here, since you're just wearing sort of wet, loose-fitting pants and a sash, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, he walks you through the, the winding roads and leads you towards this large coliseum, sort of nestled in the middle of this town. Outlast uh, is on the coast, so it kind of goes uphill just a little bit. It's not very steep, uh, but there is a large oh. arena in the middle. No, not the coliseum, sir. Good. Oh, no, please, don't. don't worry. I We're going underground. Everyone heard of the I'm, underground. No, please. It's fine. I, I you don't to, fight. You, I, you... I tried to uh, wrestle myself free because right now he's a bit terrified. Mm -hmm. Give me an opposed strength check. Uh, ooh, you might actually win this one. He rolls a 17 and 8. What is that? Uh, 25. 27. You somehow break free of his grip. <clears throat> I guess I, I, I slip away and um, and I and I raise my arms again really defensively and I say, please, sir, I, I do everything you ask, but don't send me into these in, into these gruesome pits. No, 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 no. You are too weak to fight in the pits. You will train underground as a sparring partner for the real heroes. You will defend and block while they practice their punch and their punch. And when you are unconscious, you sleep. One silver a day. You owe me five silver. It's easy. Is there any other way? I, I can write. Ah, I yes, can yes. Uh, and he turns around and points towards the ocean again, kind of gets his bearing and points to the far east side and says, that is the brothel. That is where all the young boys go. The fighters, they need young flesh to keep them company at night. We will take you to the brothels. You make better money there anyway. And he uh, starts to lead you there. Uh, um, good sir, I think uh, I can do the fighting. I'm no, 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 you, you are weak. The, the brothels, they take no, care please. of you. You serve as many I, I, large men. No. It's good. I think that it was a misunderstanding. You pay off your debt in two days. It's better. It, it, is, it, is, it is my fault. I, I really understand. I think I'm really more qualified for the fighting. Okay, and, um, okay, I'm, okay. Good. Yeah. I insist, I insist, sir. Uh, and he leads you towards the arena. You can see there's a small line out front that's moving quite quickly and being filled quite quickly, but you guys walk around the line to this little sally port on the side. There's a, a short fellow, maybe like a, a tall dwarf or a really short person, it's hard to tell, who kind of just knocks on the door three times and the door opens from the inside and behind it is a half-orc who looks you two of you up and down and waves you both in. You leave the bright city streets above and head down into the underbelly of the arena. Oh God. By all that is holy. Oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think it's down here where the reality of the situation really begins to set in because once you get down the stairwell, which is maybe like 20 feet lower, like below ground level, you enter into this sandy area and there are six guys laid out unconscious, bleeding from the mouth, uh, and a, a doctor nearby sort of stitching them up and patching this and that. 
And in the middle of this sandy room, there's a half-orc who is boxing presently with what looks to be someone just like you, sort of small, scrawny, not nearly as strong as you actually. This probably guy's only got like 12 or 13 strength and just taking like faint, faint jab, jab, and then a hard kick to the guy's rib and you can hear something crack and the guy hits the ground like a sack of potatoes and two guards drag him away and someone else steps out from a cage and takes his place. Is the guy who brought me here still with me? He's got his arm around you again. And he says, look at this. This is Mongo. He will be the great champion. You will be his sparring partner. Watch. And once again, Mongo spars with this person until he beats him into unconsciousness. And then another person comes out of the cage and spars with Mongo. And it's just person after person that he gets to practice with. And each fight is maybe two or three minutes until Mongo lands a, a solid blow. Maybe uh, maybe Mongo should fight a, a stronger opponent. I don't think we are in his league. No, no. Um, let's see. He seems to be struggling with the Drakissian words for uh, the Eridonian words and goes, you are not to fight Mongo. You are to dodge Mongo. Um, he needs practice hitting quick and moving things and uh, illusions don't you know you, you can't hit an illusion you can't practice your blows the same way so you fight and uh, when you're done you rest and then when you're rested you get back up and you fight here go and he just kind of like shoves you into the middle of the room so it's you and this other random person against Mongo, this half-orc with rippling muscles, uh, a flapping loincloth that you think is way too small to be practical. This has got to be like a stylistic choice here because there is something large and menacing behind it. Um, and he's got on these uh, bracers no, around his paint wrists. Don't pictures in my head. That's not, that's not good. I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to quickly take cover behind the person I'm fighting with. <laughs> Uh, he tries to skirt to the side and tries to I wrestle you off of him. Yep, yep. Mongo comes and throws a blow at the guy in front of you with a... Oh, 11's enough to hit. It's not a great blow. And cracks him for five points of damage, which renders him unconscious. Uh, now it's just you and Mongo face to face. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to uh, feign to having been hit by the hit as well. Uh, give me a charisma check. I don't want to get battered here down here. My royal face isn't built for that. Damn, 20. Not quite. I think I fail. <laughs> yeah. Do we not have a uh, Kuba Knight's Binder? Nonsense. I'm, I'm down on the ground, my eyes closed. Playing dead. Or unconscious. What is this? Okay, this will do. I just need to write down Mongo's stats before I forget them. Perfect. Okay, so you, you try and faint, and Mongo steps over and puts a foot against your crotch and gently leans into it very slowly. But it's not going to be able to hold any, any face. He's going to... Uh, he lets uh, off easily and quickly, 
and sort of gives you like a nudge with the big toe <sighs> underneath your knee, kind of like trying to lift your knee with his big toe. Okay, I'm um, I'm trying to um, scurry away a couple of feet to be able to stand up. And okay. once you're up, the the man who brought you in says, "Come on, you can do it. Just duck and weave, duck and weave, duck and weave. Yes. And then strike, but mostly duck and weave. It wouldn't be." As big and as brutish, I think I might have an easier time. And I'm trying to uh, dodge. Well, give me an initiative roll. Oh, God. Uh, Mongo goes at 11. He's actually a little slow this round. Maybe he's giving you a little uh, room to try it out. You're clearly the new guy here. Oh, you go first. What are you going to do? I'm dodging. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you dodge. <laughs> Completely dodge. Mongo lands a natural 20. Uh, modified 28. Um, and... I think that's a triple crit. Yeah, we're, I think we're going to max out at double crits because Frofro showed us that triple and quadruple crits are so very broken. So he'll just do double damage to you, uh, triple damage to you here. There you go. Five, two, and three is ten, plus um, his modifier of four. So 14 damage, and you are out like a light. Yes. Boom. And with that, let's go to our first break. We'll see you guys on the other side. <laughs> 